Hi all, I have another absolutely amazing game to show you today. The great Boris Spassky, so a former World Chess Champion, of course, playing against Mikhail Tal, of course, World Chess Champion in 1960 when he defeated Mikhail Botvinnik, so, and known as the Magician from Riga. So Boris Spassky, uh, white hair, in this 1979 encounter, it was played in Montreal. Montreal uh, is... Uh, the most populous city in the Canadian province of Quebec and the second most populous city in Canada. So this tournament was in 1979. Lubomir, Lubomir Kav, Kavlek, along with Czech filmmakers Milos Forman and Ivan Passa, organized the double round robin tournament to be held in Montreal, Quebec from the April 10th to May the 7th. And it was dubbed the Tournament of Stars. So the event was attended by 10 of the very strongest grandmasters at the time, including the world champion, Anatoly Karpov. So let's have a look at this particular game. D4 from Boris. We have knight f6 from Mikhail Tal, c4, e6, and now knight f3. So going into Queen's Indian territory. So b6. The Queen's Indian bishop can do quite a lot of damage sometimes on this diagonal. And sometimes, you know, its influence on f3 can maybe in indirectly influence h2, state of affairs around that. That's something to think about from this game example. e3, bishop b7. We have bishop d3, d5. b3, bishop d6. So this is a symmetrical placement, actually, by both sides, if you look at it. Almost symmetrical placement. And now both castle, bishop b2. So the bishops are kind of on the same kind of squares. The pawn structure is almost identical, except black hasn't played c5. Uh, knight bd7, knight bd2. Uh, we have queen e7, but white doesn't mirror that. Rook c1, rook a d8. So different placements, the rook and this rook, different. Not quite symmetrical. And the queen goes to c2, supporting a battery against h7. So some controversy may be brewing up here with this imbalance. We have c5. C takes. E takes, and now white plays D takes. It leaves black with hanging pawns. Sometimes these are not so bad. The strategy, if you're playing against the hanging pawns, the classic recipe is trying to fit, try to fix them down later, restrain, blockade, and destroy them later. Uh, with the with the hanging pawns, sometimes there are dynamic opportunities to celebrate. So let's see what happens in this game. We have Queen C3, so swapping uh, that battery for a more dangerous one, kind of pinning the knight sometimes. Uh, so if the knight moves queen takes g7 is checkmate. We have rook fe8, rook fd1. And now a really, really interesting move. And it's not entirely sure. I mean, this is 2020. The, the analysis tools we have to examine Mikhail Tell sacrifices, if they're sound or not, it's always going to be interesting to recheck Tell games. He said himself... There are two types of sacrifices, correct ones and mine. And in other quotations, he's basically said sound ones and the rest of the mine. So he himself is not really that, you know, needing uh, for a sacrifice to be fully sound. And it means really we can check his games. Every new generation can check his games for the soundness. And here it seems actually my verdict today, this next move is pretty sound. Can you guess? what he plays for 200 points. Black to play here. What would you play with black? Okay. D4, it liberates that Queen's Indian Bishop, which is firing in all cylinders along with this one now. And they're kind of conspiring against H2 as a soft spot. There's the possibility of a Greek gift here now in many variations, many, many uh, variations. We have E takes D4 being played. There's not too much choice there, otherwise that looks pretty disastrous. Uh, so now we have C takes. Here there, there is a choice for white. Uh, Spassky kind of didn't play a very, very optimal choice, it seems, but you would ne need real guts to play what seems to be the most objective way of handling this particular sacrifice. You would really need to be a computer. But you know, if Tao knew he was playing against a computer, he probably wouldn't uh, play 
uh, like this so much. Uh, but you know, thankfully, he's playing humans, and Queen A5 was played. Before we get into that game continuation with Queen A5, uh, it seems Knight takes D4 might be the best way for White to play, even though it neglects H2. Uh, it's tempting to play Bishop takes H2, but my analysis is revealing actually instead of that Greek gift Bishop takes H2, Bishop F4 actually sets White. A huge number of problems in this position and guarantees black near equality it seems just bishop f4 i know it's it's kind of uh and it's an interesting uh pawn sacrifice for example you know g3 then pin and then here it's it's kind of it looks pretty dangerous this this scenario is lethal potentially uh for white this kind of scenario is lethal for white so let's let's go through that again. So bishop e5, so bishop f1, knight g4. It's actually really dangerous stuff. Instead of um, knight c4 here, maybe the way for white to have equality and nothing more is knight 2 to f3 after queen f6. This position looks as though black's got enough play, basically. Looks as though black's uh, even, and there are there are ways for white to go wrong. You know, as I mentioned, so knight c4, queen f6 is dangerous for white. You know, looking at f2, and then knight takes h2. It's, it shows there are dangers in this whole line with bishop f4. Let's just go back here. This is a really interesting resource, bishop f4. Other options for white here instead of g3, because you might consider. Uh, g3 to be a bit of a weakening move so what else apart from g3 well a3 just to see what black is threatening as, as a token investigation black would play knight e5 and knight takes d3 and knight g4 and it's pretty vicious this bishop this bishop they're all conspiring on soft spots here for example like this pieces don't have to go back because hg queen h2 and queen h1 and here you know the pieces kind of crash through actually and now threatening queen takes g2. That bishop is on uh, full gear here against the black king, um, against against the white king. Uh, here, if we look at knight f5 instead, maybe this is the more critical. Uh, trying to use this battery against the black king sometimes. Queen e6, queen c4. Uh, here, this looks as though it's even. Uh, an alternative here, queen b4, looking at that bishop, trying to hit that bishop and that one. It's really interesting stuff after knight e5. <laughs> and it's just wild. The position's wild. Two bishops hanging. This bishop's hanging. Uh, if we go with knight takes g7, hitting the queen, and queen takes f4, rook takes d3. This is just wild stuff. And it ends up, after this extremely wild variation, uh, to be technically about equal. I think there's um, there's king safety issues and stuff so it's all pretty you know it's like madness bishop f4 and it shows that tell sacrifice if you look at it with the latest computers this year it seems this one seems fine this position uh previous and this they've been looking at the, the immediate greek gift and you know i'm a fan bishop takes a so i'm a fan i've got the right t-shirt for this game on today i'm a fan of the greek gift or greek gift in reverse but you know, um, beware, beware of Greeks <laughs> wearing, wearing these t-shirts. So knight g4 check. It seems here, you know, white actually pops out for dinner with king g3. That's the strongest here. Uh, if king g3, uh, it seems black hasn't got a killer attack. For example, here there's f4. And uh, white ends up just being much better. Black's being pushed out here. Uh, if we if we go back there, I mean, you might think, what what are the options here of the king g3? It just seems as though uh, they're not very good uh, for black. If queen e5 check, you might want to keep the queen eyeing e3 here. But white plays knight 2 to f3. And here, uh, it seems as though white's fine. White's with a big advantage. So the king actually popping out seems to be the way to play it here not king g1 uh, this might actually give black uh, an interesting attack sometimes um but e even here even here in this line white's doing fine actually uh it's it's it white would need uh, to go wrong somewhat uh so 
basically yeah the the greek gift there in in that line i think it's actually better believe it or not to play bishop f4 here uh, so it reserves some very very interesting possibilities so anyway that aside queen a5 was played and this is this is an enormous tempo gainer potentially uh, for black to leverage this queen's placement uh, you know check to the queen gaining key tempos it's a really valuable uh, thing in the toolkit for any budding tactician and attacking players we have knight e5 so that's hitting that bishop that's taken bishop takes e5 we have knight c4 here it's a it's not a very nice position for white at all uh, if for example bishop a3 to try and justify the queen at least supports a3 but queen e6 this position with queen g4 you know threatening chatmate uh, there's devastation for example like this and then rook takes e1 check yeah there's devastation the queen's not really that relevant getting out of the foreign line of that queen and, and black's doing fantastically well so bishop a3 isn't particularly hot either uh, so we have knight c4 though and now rook d5 this massive massive tempo gainer yeah it's been totally misplayed these bishops are really conspiring potentially now after queen d2 uh, can you guess what Mikhail Tell plays here? There's no clues or anything. I'm not giving you any clues. <laughs> Ten seconds. But can you work out the continuation as well? So black to play here. I think, by the way, Hugh Murphy, yeah, his, his name's come to me. Hugh Murphy used to play the the Tarish defense with this and playing for d4 and opening up this bishop and having a lethal attack it is it is in the toolkit of a lot of uh, attacking players this kind of d4 break uh, so here yeah anyway so bishop takes h2 check drags the king out classic Greek gift but there's a difference here the rook can be used and it makes it even more venomous bringing this rook in we have king g1 if king g3 then can you see what black plays here 10 seconds for 100 points. Okay. Knight e4 check. Yeah, knight e4 check. It, it makes it very quick for queen h4 check. And if here, then queen takes e4 check and then going back for, for mate, checkmate. So, um, yeah, king g1 was played, not king g3. But now, black to play, guess what Mikhail Tell simply plays here, which is simple and strong. 10 seconds for 100 points. And you might have some analytical caution here if you did consider knight g4. Because what is the exact points if, say, white plays rookie one? Aren't they embarrassing your back row? The game actually ended here. If rookie one, yeah, there's a way of handling this beautifully. Can you see what the point is? So this didn't happen. Spassky resigned. He didn't play rookie one, testing it. He trusted that Mikhail Tau would play this tactic. So here, uh, 100 points. Black to play and win here. A little puzzle position for you. Okay, yeah, rook sack. It brings the queen in to h4, and then there's queen h2 checkmate. Well, not not quite. Now it's checkmate. After queen takes g2 checkmate, it's checkmating rather. And you might think, well, hold on a sec, hold on a sec. What about if h2 is the issue there? What about queen f4? Uh, so here, after instead of rook e1, let's try queen f4. The thing is, you don't use rook h1 then in that case because the queen's covering. That's the perk of that. You don't want to meet the uh, advantage of that move. Instead, you play queen h4 here. There's time to do this. The back row is not attacked. So you're threatening queen h1, chatmate. If white plays this, you can just ignore that. You don't need to indulge that even. And then the best for white is just give up the queen and be chatmated. Uh, on f3, again, the mechanism here is rook h1 check, queen h4 then queen h2 
then Queen H1 is checkmate. So the Greek gift working absolutely beautifully in the continuation of the game of Queen A5. Yeah, not Spassky's day here. He got wiped out pretty quickly. The game uh, received the second brilliancy prize at this Montreal tournament, 1979. And Tal did not agree, actually, with, with the prize. He considered it to be... He's considered it to be a pretty obvious sacrifice. His picks for the best game were Karpov's win with Black against Timon and his own game against Hubner. Tal finished with 12 out of 18 in this tournament, which is the same score as Karpov. Karpov needed a brilliant win against Lebojevic with the Black pieces in the penultimate round. And only then Karpov was able to tie with Mikhail Tal in the final round and share first place with him. So Tal was really totally in the running for absolutely winning this tournament without any, even sharing it. And this is one of his beautiful games there. The attack flows naturally. Can we say it's unsound? I really doubt it now. There are so many resources for black, like this bishop f4. Black doesn't have to, uh, you know, in that critical line, black's got uh, stuff to, to play with. So um, the jury's out for me. But please do post your analysis if you think the the sacrifice is unsound or not so the queen's engine uh, makes this great uh, appearance here in this game if you want a free queen's engine course well worth checking out king's crusher tv slash free qid course i hope you really enjoyed this sweet little game as much as me Greek gifts are a huge point scorer for me, especially in the online chess world we're in now. Well worth uh, checking out the wiki article as well on Greek gifts and trying to practice them, seeing where they work and don't work. There's, it's a great skill in its own right, practicing Greek gifts, I find, and very, very entertaining part of chess. So, uh, okay, comments, questions, like, shares, appreciated. Thanks very much.